Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to talk about color cast. Now you might be familiar with this as being some of the different colors that would come off of lights and whatnot while you're shooting inside. But I want to show an example, actually two examples, that show what can happen from also ambient light that comes in and also if you use flash photography what can happen when you've got other type of reflective surfaces and things you can do. You're going to eventually run across this no matter what type of photography you do for real estate and I've got a few different techniques that I I use that make it pretty quick to do that and be able to correct it. But I want to be able to also show uh, some things along the way, so the full process of where this would fit into the workflow. So it's a little bit long, a little bit drawn out, not just how do you fix color cast, but how does color cast work into the entire workflow with two examples. Are you ready? Let's go. So here's our first example, and no, your monitor does not need adjusting. Uh, that's a lot of red uh, that's up there on the ceiling. You can see it's even bled onto these kind of beige-ish, yellowish walls that are here. Um, this is a terrible picture taken by me. It's the lit shot of a series. So this is my ambient shot. You can see kind of then, this is almost true to color what the colors were uh, for this particular room. Um, you can see then that when I put in my flash, yeah, I overlit this whole area on the right, so I'm going to repair that. But the color cast is a thing really to concentrate on in this video. Then, of course, I have a window pull. And luckily, too, I'm going to be able to use this window pull as a repair layer in some cases for some of the problems. But the big one that I'm going to concentrate on for this tutorial is the color cast. This is going to be our first example. I've already done my lens correction. You've seen some of the other things I've done uh, with this on other videos. So I'm not going to get into too much detail with those. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open all three of these as layers in Photoshop. Once again, all the lens correction was done on all three of these, and this is now being loaded. And of course, that's overloading on another uh, older uh, uh, example that I'm going to show here in just a second. So now, once those are all loaded in there, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this other uh, image that I don't need. So we've got that loaded in there. So we can see now I've got my ambient on top. I've got my color cast uh, issue on the bottom, and then I've also got my uh, window pull frame. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, see how it's darker down here? I'm going to use that to fix uh, this spot here. If I didn't, and I used this ambient layer as luminosity, watch what happens. Nasty, nasty orange shadows. And you've seen where I've had to fix this before by doing match color. There's another video on that, so I won't get into too much detail, but just a real quick fix for that is if I take this uh, shot that I'd normally use for my darken mode, and we'll do that at the end. I'm just going to do Control J, that duplicated that. I'm going to move it up above that uh, my flash layer. I'm going to hide everything, and then just brush some of that into that spot. That's all that it's really going to take. Boom, done. Okay, so that's a pretty easy fix. Now I've got what would be two layers that I have to deal with. So to make them one, I'm going to highlight both of them, Control J, right click and then merge those together, merge layers. So now I've got a layer that I feel pretty comfortable with working with. Now, with that, what am I going to do to fix this problem? Well, uh, what I found easiest in this particular instance, and you can try a few of the, these different techniques as well, is I would go to, let me zoom in here so you can actually see. Let me go to Alt, uh, excuse me, Alt View Fill. So what I find is if I go to Image, Adjust, and Match Color. Now you've seen me do this before where I pick a source and it figures out what to do, but a lot of times you can also just hit this Neutralize uh, little checkbox. And you can see what immediately happened. That red went away from the ceiling. The walls, that's probably not too bad. They look a little bit cold. It definitely neutralized them out a little bit. I could play around with some of the color intensity sliders here to say, okay, is that about right? What do I want for the amount of color to neutralize out of it? But I'll just go ahead and I'll leave that down at the default, which is 100. So we'll take it back to that. So. <clears throat> Excuse me, now that I've got that neutralized, I can do a variety of different things with it. Once again, this is without that neutralized layer, and this is with it. Look how white everything got here. Still got a lot of red going on here. In fact, if we were to go back to our ambient shot, and we were to turn that into normal mode, you can see there's still red that shows up no matter what. And that's coming off from a variety of different things. But anyways, let's put that back to luminosity, and we'll get back to him in a minute just shut him off. So anyways, we've got this layer here that's not too bad. I could say, you know what, I only want just so much of him showing through. So that brings back a little bit of warmth by turning down the opacity. But more so, 
I want to be able to show this floor. It neutralized the floor way too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and leave a layer mask on that. And I'm going to reveal all. Zoom out a little bit. And now I'm going to select my eraser tool. And my eraser is at about an 8% flow. And I'm going to now erase that floor. So now we've got the true color coming back from the floor. We didn't lose anything like that. And if we wanted to, the couch and some of the other things in there, but that's fine. And I'm not worried about the windows because we're going to have a window pull. Now the next thing I would do is I would do a, an ambient layer. So once again, we've done the color cast. I'm going to go through the whole thing, but there's one more step after I do this in the window pull. But just really quick, let's just do this uh, ambient. I could have done the fast flambient that I did in my last uh, tutorial, but I'll just go ahead and I'll brush some of that in just for this example, just real quick. Okay. So make this look a little bit more natural to what would, uh, we'd have. And I'm going to really lighten up the ceiling so we can see what's going on. And I love to have actually my ceiling show a lot of ambient. A little bit too much blown out there above it, so we'll tone that down just a little bit. Okay, But we've got a pretty good ambient uh, lighting now uh, going on with that. So let's say that's good enough. And I'm ready to go. I do my window pull next, so I'm going to bring that uh, up to the top. You've seen me do this probably a hundred times in different videos. Set this one to darken mode, layer mask hide, take a brush at 100% flow, and just paint in those windows. And I'm just going to do the one over here and go boom, and we layer him in. So he's nice. So now the picture's starting to come together. It's starting to look good. I could even do a little bit over here on, on this guy, and he'd probably be okay. So we show a little blue sky. But I still got this color cast going on on the ceiling. So even though I did my neutralization here, right, it's better than what we had here. So my neutralized layer here looks better, but we're going to take it one step further. Let's take the polygon tool. And I'm going to go ahead and take that polygon tool, and I'm going to draw a polygon around the ceiling. I don't have to get exactly, exactly right. Close is good enough, because what we're going to do is after selecting that polygon around the ceiling, I'm going to go Select, Modify, feather and a radius of five. Now that blends it in. Remember once again what we're going to do here, everything kind of blends. There shouldn't be any harsh lines between anything and I'll show you why in just a second. So now we go to layer, adjustment layer, hue saturation layer, and then we tone that saturation down. But you notice what happened here. The saturation layer mask was automatically added where we had put our polygon that was then feathered. So now all I have to do is hit the saturation slider and boom. And then I can desaturate to my heart's content. How much do I want to leave in? If I completely desaturate, it looks completely unnatural. That is not how a ceiling looks. There has to be some color in it. I just want to remove some of the cast. So I'm going to leave just a little bit in there. Now you can uh, tone that in and out. You can see what's going on. So that looks good to me. So that's how I would do that. So not looking too bad. It's not the final product. I would, of course, do layer flatten. I would save that. And of course, then that goes back over into Lightroom, which then I can apply one of my bumps. I'm just going to do this one here. And you know what? That looks pretty good. Definitely bumped it up a little bit. To get some of this other cast out of here, though, I'll bump up the whites just a tad. Right. And that looks pretty good. So not too bad. Okay, so now let's take the second example. Before moving forward though, once again, let's just review. This is what we had for the color cast, and it was definitely a very crimson type of ceiling. And of course, that did not match what we had at all here, even though the uh, ambient shot uh, did have some other color cast being thrown up here into the shadows, and uh, it was way too overblown if you were just to use that for the ceiling. So using the combination of everything together then, we ended up with this. So not too bad as a result. Our next example, this is where I've got an ambient shot of this room, and you see some stuff going on. There's no true colors almost because, well, I guess they'd be true colors, uh, technically speaking, but look at the amount of green, if you can look real close, and if your monitor is showing this video very well, there's green coming in from outside. There's a lot of green. There's different stuff also going on up here. And then we go to my flash shot, and it did get a lot of those true colors. That's not looking too bad but we still have a little bit of bleed going on on the ceiling up here. So what do we do to fix all that? Well, we can probably just do the second alternative. So let's, uh, that I showed, of just masking that out. So if I were to do the flambient, once again, I'll just say edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Once again, these two pictures, I already done my lens correction. So these two pictures now, these two frames are loading up into Photoshop. I might do my auto align on this. I know that they aligned fairly well. I um, didn't really move my tripod much. So let's go ahead and zoom that in so you can see what's going on. I'm going to uh, then apply my fast flambient. It 
check out my previous video for more on that where I hit my F4 key and I've got a pretty good looking then a flash ambient blend. I'm though going to take in with my brush at uh, an 8% flow. I'm going to brush in a little bit more ambient where I want to. Once again, this isn't just for color cast. This is how it fits into my workflow. So this would be the next thing I'd be doing, which, okay, let's throw in just a little bit more ambient uh, lighting here. Sometimes I like the ceiling looking that way. So we take out some of the flashiness. Foreground would never have that much flash, and we get some reflection going there, and then it's the worst. We want some natural light angles coming across that fireplace. So let's say that's good enough. That's good. Now, there's really no color cast problems that I need to do to neutralize it. If I did, if I went ahead and duplicated that bottom layer, which was my flash layer, and I went to Image, Adjust, Match Color, and if I were to neutralize that, it really doesn't buy me much. It just went ahead and it almost desaturated some of it. So I could probably use this and that would be okay. Once again, without it being neutralized and with it being neutralized, there's not much difference. My biggest thing with this one let me just get rid of that layer, is that that saturation going on here, all these different colors hitting the ceiling. So in that case, I just use the polygon tool and I draw this polygon across the ceiling. And look, I've got an obstruction heading my way with this fireplace. Even though it's white, I could probably get by with just desaturating it. But what I do, I just make sure that I draw around it. You don't have to get too exact, right? Boom, and then you just draw a pair big like that. That's good. Select, modify feather, five on the pixels for the radius. And then we go layer, adjustment layer, hue saturation layer. And then we've got our hue saturation mask already done. And we just desaturate a bit to, to our liking. And that's it. So we've got that. View fit. You can see how that all looks real nice. We go layer flatten, right? Save that. Back in Lightroom it goes. So what we had originally was then a, uh, a picture with some bleed on here from our flash, a lot of bleed that was going on here from outside on our ambient shot, and then working it together and basically just doing a fast flam ambient with a few extra touches and then doing the uh, desaturation to ceiling look like that. Go ahead and do a uh, one of my presets. And once again, anything that had a lot of color problems like this, I do like to up my whites a little bit more. And it also brightens it up. I'll bring even some highlights back into this compared to where my bump was. And that's what we have. This is now color cast two compared to what we had from these two shots turned into this. Not too bad. And of course, then we go back to our other shot where we had to do a lot of work. This was our final product from what originally looked like this. So those are some of the techniques I use for color cast. Another thing that you can also do is you can make duplicate layers for each one of the colors that you think might be casting in. You can desaturate just that color from it, mask it in. That's a lot of work. I find this to be rather quick. And I also use keystrokes. So for instance, if I'm doing match color, it's just Alt-I. Uh, uh, a and M. That's it. So it's like I am. It's just Alt I for to go into the image menu at the top, and then A uh, for adjustments, and M is match color. So once you get used to doing that, or like for instance, adding the hue saturation layer, it's a uh, Alt Alt L uh, J H, and that gets you the uh, the layer pull down uh, J for an adjustment layer, and H for hue saturation layer. Do that, and you're just going to be clicking them off like that. So during a tutorial, a lot of those things go slow, but in real time, you get used to using keystrokes, doing these simple techniques, and they're very quick. Instead of multiple layers and multiple colors and taking those colors out, depending on how much work you needed to put into it for the type of shot that you were providing, you might want to put in that much work, but for most MLS stuff, this I find works very well, and you still get good, accurate colors out of it. Well, I hope this tutorial was very helpful to you, and uh, it'll help you with your photography as well, and at least a few take-home points, if nothing else. If you did like this, though, video, you can uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.